Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for July 18 through to July 23. The last 24 hours have seen significant stepping up in seismic activities with a 6.1 earthquake located in the Alaskan Peninsula and also a 6.0 offshore Valparaiso in Chile. I believe that this is the beginning of a fairly significant seismic period as a fairly large coronal hole formation is also presenting a large risk for a fairly large earthquake. I believe there's a potential of one or more earthquakes around 70 magnitude is possible during this watch. Now using the SEO composite and focusing on the southern hemisphere and the substantial coronal hole region, there are some active components associated with this coronal hole. As we can see, I will be mapping and plotting these regions shortly. There's also a fair amount of activity on the western flank of this coronal hole that is of most interest as well. Now looking at the SDO304 angstrom, and first off we'll have a look at the northern hemisphere. We do see a spectacular film eruption that occurred this time yesterday, fairly spectacular burst high up in the northern hemisphere. And we also see a fairly predominant feature above a northern polar coronal hole region, which is also of interest. But the main area of focus is around the equator and below to the southern hemisphere. We do have some interesting active regions that are fairly inactive at the moment, but they are of concern. They do take up a fair bit of room on the solar corona. But we do get to see some interesting filament eruptions and solar reactions in and around these regions, which is of concern. Now looking at the Solar Terrestrial Activity Report via Solon.info, and we get to see this fairly large looking coronal hole formation in the southern hemisphere that is of most interest during this watch. And that's CH466. I do feel it does present a risk for at least one significant earthquake, or possibly two. There's also another region I will be targeting during this watch. I will be plotting these shortly. Now looking at the latest telemetry from ACE, we get to see significant changes in solar wind speeds over the last 48 hours, where solar wind speeds were at 700 km a second, down to current levels of 347 km a second. During the last 24 hours, density has increased quite rapidly. That's an indication that the leading edge of the coronal hole speed stream is now affecting the Earth. Now having a close look at the southern hemisphere with the 193 angstrom and solar monitor, and we get to see this fairly large looking coronal hole region but slightly ahead of this area, we do have an interesting feature on the solar corona. And this is a magnetic scarring region that seems to be producing some seismic events over the last few days. A 5.5 earthquake was recorded today in Vanuatu, which is in this region. That's an indication we may be getting some similar seismic events over the coming days in along this scar. And the next regions of concern would be 29 degrees south latitude and also 43 degrees south latitude. So we could be seeing an event perhaps 5.5 to 5.8 magnitude in these locations in the coming days. Now looking at Cygnus Streamer, we get to see the possible arrival of a high speed coronal hole speed stream affecting the Earth's magnetic field sometime on July 19 or July 20. This could coincide with high solar wind speeds and a sudden seismic shock which could produce a significant seismic event. Now looking at the Hanode XRT with Solar Monitor, and I have isolated this very large coronal hole region into three separate sections as I do feel it could be at least two significant seismic events, and possibly three. The first area is right on the equator region, and this could be an event around six in magnitude for the region of Indonesia. But the other two regions appear to be a little bit more stronger in magnitude potential, and they are sitting at around seven to 10 degrees south latitude, and also around 11 to 15 degrees south latitude. I'm going to be mapping three separate regions I feel could be at risk for a significant earthquake, First off, we'll have a look at the equatorial hole as mapped from the solar corona to Earth. And the most likely region that could be affected could be the region of Papua Indonesia or the Malacca Sea Indonesia region. My second area of concern for this watch is a region of 7 to 10 degrees south latitude. And the most likely region that could be affected is in and around the region of Solomon Islands or the Papua New Guinea region. And my third area of concern with regards to this very large coronal hole formation is a region of 11 to 15 degrees south latitude. And the most likely locations stretch from the Santa Cruz Islands down towards Vanuatu. Now Vanuatu is of concern as it does have a newly activated volcano in the region. Now having a look at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly, this is showing parts of the globe that could be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures. This is a five day moving average and the areas we focus on are the darkish green. And the main areas of focus for this watch seems to be the Mariana Islands and Volcano Islands region, the region above Taiwan stretching towards the Ryukyu Islands, 
It's also a region above Panama that is of interest, and also the region of Siberia in Russia that is also showing up for its first time. Now looking at the World Ionospheric Map, and there's not a lot to report with this service. Current levels are showing at around 10 and 11, and I do get concerned when levels reach around 15 and 16. However, the main areas of focus seem to be northern Sumatra and Nicobar Islands, and also Panama with this service. Now looking at the vertical ionospheric delay, and we're starting to see some anomalies showing again in the region of Japan. So that's an indication that we may be receiving another significant seismic event for the region, unfortunately. As mentioned in the start of the video, I do believe the region of New Zealand could be susceptible of a few decent shakes during this watch mainly due to the scarring region, which does extend down towards 43 degrees south latitude. So there is a potential, I feel, of a 5.5 earthquake for the region. And finally, there is another potential of another significant earthquake for the region of Japan, as there is a scar on the solar corona, which extends 36 to 38 degrees north latitude, which could be indicative of another significant seismic event for the region. And that's my volcano and earthquake watch for July 17, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. And for anyone interested, I have my planetary alignment video, which falls at the beginning of this earthquake watch, in the description box. Thanks for watching.